Firstly, I'd like to honor our parents, uh, our spiritual parents. You know, it's not often that a 24-year-old gets an opportunity like this. Uh, but I'm humbled to stand before you all today and uh, share what's on my heart. Um, a lot of you have been reading uh, Matthew lately, am I right? Okay, just the front row, the rest of you demerits. So, I will be making a lot of reference uh, to Matthew today because uh, our main verse and the core of the message will be off, out of the Sermon on the Mount. You all familiar with that? Okay. Who can tell me how it starts? How does the Sermon on the Mount start? The Beatitudes. Amen. So, we, so Pastor, they read it. They read it. So let's go into today's message. Okay, thank you, media team. So, does this look familiar to some of you? No, don't play games, okay. Who can tell me what the word is? Okay. Everyone went to high school. Next slide. All right. Ask. This will be today's message title, and I'm going to break it down to you. So let's start by the definition. The definition of ask is to say something in order to obtain an answer or some information. Now, since the time this has dropped into my spirit, the word ask has, has stood out. Now, let's go further in the game. Let's add some blocks. Let's add two blocks to ask, three and four. Perfect. Okay. So let's go with a. A stands for ask. Now, what do you think the next one is? Seek. And the third? Amen? So this is an action verb, ask. And is a starting point to a three-part process, and ultimately the mo most vital one. Now to understand, let's go into our main verse. Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those that ask of him? Amen? Guys, I need your energy. You know, when, when Kersha said, I am unstoppable, I pictured myself on the train track where there's a runaway train. And that's the way, if the energy that you have, you need to stop that train. So, can you hear amen? Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna build this up and then I'm gonna take you through it. So let's just look at verse seven, right? You think it's quite straightforward, like we all did when we first read it. You know, it's just straight, it's simple, easy to understand. But it isn't. If we examine our, uh, examine our lives today, we'll figure out how to activate this golden rule. So in some of your Bibles, when, when you see Matthew 7, it has in brackets, prayer and the golden rule. I'm not sure if, if your, your one says that, but in mine it does. So this is a golden rule. There are three actions, as we see. Ask, seek, and knock. All of you all are familiar with this, but I'm gonna to share today what God has laid on my heart. Now let's look at just number one, ask. It is the first act, but it's also the part that makes up the letter of each action. 
as you can see. You all see that? I believe it is the starting and activation point. It can therefore be considered that we cannot seek before asking. Neither can we knock before asking. Why do I say this? Okay, let's, let's go into Matthew 7, verse 8. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. If this verse is not active in our life, then it means we have fallen victim. And for the longest time, we have been seeking in the wrong places and knocking on all the wrong doors. Ask. It is important for us to know what to ask. Like for instance, there was a man who walked to the top of the hill to God. The man asked God, what's a million years to you? And God said, a minute. Then the man asked, what is a million rand to you? And God said, a rand. Then the man asked, can I have one rand? And God said, sure, in a minute. <laughs> For those that didn't get it, it'll come to you in a minute. So how do we ask God? Not, not what? How do we ask God? It is found in thanksgiving and in prayer. This is our means of communicating with God. So in all things, before seeking and knocking, ask of God. In order to ask, we need to say something, like it says in the definition. But unfortunately, we have stopped this. Instead of opening our mouth, we ask Mr. Google, our friends, our spouse, and anyone else on various social media platforms. Human behavior has changed so much, but we are too caught up to snap out of it. The world has left us without a voice, and some of us don't even know it. Kids today struggle to hold a conversation. So like they do to us as parents, should we also text God when we need to ask him something? It's a question we need to ask ourselves. This is why we find so many people in the faith today without a true relationship with God. At the same time, we are slowly losing an entire generation because of the lack of conversation between God and man. If we can't converse with the one that is here, seated here, one another, who we can see, how much more difficult is it with God? Parents, begin to foster a culture in the home that sees you making conversation with your kids. Show them that asking you means not, I want you to listen to this. Show them that asking you means nothing if they are not asking of God, who in turn provides through you. If they always see you as the source, your door will be the only one they will be knocking on. So why are we talking about young people? Let's, let's mix it up a bit. Can I have three young people come up? Youth, yes, your young people come. Just three. Gabriel, no, that, that pass has passed. I have limited time, so three, quickly, very quickly. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, give them a hand as they come up, guys. So I'm just going to ask them a question, each of them. You can stand in any particular order, it's fine. This is three musketeers. How do you feel today, Lennon? I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> Great. Okay. Landon, if you could ask God for anything, what would it be? To give me the power to, give, to bring great happiness to my parents and family. 
Okay, that's good. You can clap, guys. You can clap for him. Jordan, what are you seeking in life? Success. And Dante, which door are you waiting to be open in your life? Okay, this is a tough one. The opportunity to go far in my career. Yeah. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, um, Dante is a very good uh, footballer, and uh, he aspires to obviously play uh, for international club one day and be recruited. So that's the door that he's waiting for. Thank you, guys. If you can have a seat. Now, just like them, I also had a similar response when I first asked myself, you know. What is it that I what what is, does what is it that I seek, and which door am I waiting for God to open? Now I know I've been on the point of ask, so let's cut to it. The first step, and the answer, to what we should be asking, seeking, and the door that we should be that should be knocked on is found in Matthew six thirty three. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, the Bible is, is quite simple. Everything is in there. It's just about looking and understanding. So God has given us the, he's given us the principle of ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. But what is the starting point? The starting point is seeking first the kingdom. So, let us do it in this way. The first action is ask. What do we ask God? Ask God to give us the directions to the kingdom. Secondly, the next action, to seek. Once we have directions, and now this is the word that I'm speaking about, that, that God has laid upon me. First, you receive directions. Second, is you go on the journey seeking the destination that we all understand is the kingdom. And it says, seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Then finally, the third action is to knock on the door to the kingdom of heaven. And once you have entered those doors, all things shall be added. Amen? Are you following? So everything those young men have said will come once you're found in the kingdom. I hope you see how powerful this is. Furthermore, let's have a look. You know, God is a humorous God, and he puts things there, and he, he, he just likes to play with our, our brain sometimes. Do you think it's coincidental that all the words end with K? Could be that every, every action leads to the kingdom, amen? I believe Jesus says this before in chapter 633. In order to test whether you are moved by your flesh or the spirit. Our main text is taken out of Matthew 7. Where it says, ask, seek, and knock. But then before that, in chapter 6, it says, seek first the kingdom. God will test us. So in a nutshell, once you find yourself in the kingdom, only then can this principle become alive. When we have found the kingdom of God and when we ask of God, we can ask again and again. I believe we can even go as far to say, if it's understanding that you want, then the words or the letters A-S-K can also be considered as ask, search, and know. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Seek in God's word 
and know what he knows. The difference between seek and search, the object of seek is an item you are trying to locate, whereas the object of search is the place you are looking in. Seek implies that the seeker knows that the item they are looking for does exist, which is the kingdom. Whereas in search, there is no such implication. Means God's word will unlock things to you when you search in it. We all have needs on earth. But the kingdom holds all of it. And like it says, it will be added to you. But be careful of Satan and what he will show you. Let's go to Matthew 4, verse 8 to 9. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. You see where I'm going with this? You may feel like you're in a kingdom. So let, let's understand a kingdom. A kingdom is where you have a ruler, right? In God's kingdom, he rules and he reigns. And when you are found in his kingdom, he rules and reigns over your life. But it can be the total opposite if what you are found in is not God's kingdom, but the kingdoms of the world. We often look at celebrities and prominent people and think, Oh, they are blessed of the Lord. But remember, Satan can deceive you. So guard your heart and your mind. Now, let's, let's go to, let's, let's hear what God has to say, or what Jesus has to say regarding the kingdom in Matthew 6, verse 9 and 10. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father, who in our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, just a moment ago I said, we all need, have needs on earth. And the kingdom holds all of it and it will add it unto you. This is the first time Jesus teaches them to pray. And what does he mention first after giving thanks to his father? He speaks about kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that dimension is available for us. Amen? It's here on earth. You can tap into it. Don't think that we physically bring in down a vehicle from heaven. No. We're not. It's all provided here for you. So like I said, the kingdom, it's a place where God reigns and rules over your life. It's safe. We'll call that the safe place. But the kingdom of the world is where Satan dwells. It will ultimately cause destruction in your life. Now, we may find ourselves in that position today, but that's the reason for this message. As much as I may be standing here before you, giving, delivering this word, it also comes to ask the question in my life and move me closer to God. So there's a lot of questions I would, be, I would think after what I've gone through. But there is guidance and there is truth in God's word. Now, I just want to focus on four simple ways. Now, the title of the message was Ask, okay? So I'm going to focus on four simple ways in which we can ask God once you find yourself in his kingdom. Okay? Four simple ways in how we ask. 
once you are in the kingdom. So are you following? Is everyone following? Okay. In order for this principle of ask, seek, knock to be active in your life, we have to first seek the kingdom. Some of us are in the kingdom. Some of us are at the door. Some of us are still finding directions and some of us are looking all over. Today, gather your thoughts. Gather yourself. Look at yourself inside. Look at your life all around. Ask yourself, are you found in the kingdom of God? Are you, in, are you still in search of it? It's very important what to ask of God. But if you can be true to yourself today and figure out which kingdom you are in currently, then the sooner we can tap into this principle of asking, seeking, and knocking, and doing it all over again and again. So number one, I, sorry, the, I didn't give the media team this, but they will have the scriptures. So you can write it down. You can take notes if you'd like. I know last week uh, Pastor did a good job by having his points on the board, and you guys took photographs of it. But today you might have to just write it down. So number one. Ask for what is good. Let's go to James 1 verse 5. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives to all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. You see in which way we should ask and what we should ask? We should ask for good. Okay? Matthew 7 verse 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those that ask of him? So here's the promise. Ask of good, and you shall receive good. God has written it. It is his word. Number two. Ask in faith. Now sometimes... We ask, and because we've asked before, and nothing's happened, we ask without believing. We feel like if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm just going to ask God, and I'll leave it to him. It depends what day or what kind of day he's having at the moment, but I'll just ask. But every single time that we ask of God, we should ask in faith, believing. So let's go to Matthew 21, verse 22. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Amen? I hope you're receiving this word today. It's quite easy. It's quite easy so far. There's two rules of asking. I'm going to give you the other two. But so far, it promises in its word that it will, asking in this way, will give you the result. Ask for what is good, and God will give it to you. Ask in faith, believe in, and God will give it to you. Number three, ask in his name. So let's go to John 14, verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I don't like the scripture. This is all of Everything that I've shown you so far he is God's word, God's promise. But it's just that we need to look in the right places, ask the right questions, ask in the right way. So, so far, what do we have? What is point number one? Ask for what is? I need you to interact with me. Ask for what is? Ask in? Ask in is? Amen. So let's go to John 16, verse 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. So, it's simple. Go to God, like I said earlier. It's about communication. If you do not have a relationship with God, if you are not talking to God, you cannot ask God for anything. If you keep being quiet and say, no, God knows what's in my heart. God knows the questions in my mind. No, God requires you to open up your mouth and speak to him. 
Amen? So for the longest time, we believe like, I'll just go on and you know what? Even when you speak to people, ah, you know what? Only God knows what I'm going through. But God doesn't know. Because just like them, you're not saying anything. You're keeping it inside. You're bottling it up. What's going on? When you can be vulnerable with God, when you can tell him what's really going on inside of you, that's when the gates of the kingdom can be open to you. Only then, with a relationship. It cannot happen any other way. Right now, we have to consider what type of relationship do we have with our Father? In, let, let's, go back to, let's go back to Matthew 7, verse 7 to, to 11, or to 12. Okay. So it says here, in 9, For what man is there among you, who if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone, or if a, he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you good gifts? Now, what is he showing us here? He's speaking about a relationship. Immediately after speaking about ask, seek, knock, it's speaking about a relationship between a father and a son. It's speaking of a relationship, and it's comparing it to, if you are to ask your earthly father, he will still give you good gifts. Right? So, it's speaking about the only access point, which is God. And having that relationship. So, ask in his name. Ask for what is good. Ask in faith. It happens this way so far. You open your mouth. You pray. You give thanksgiving. You ask God to come into your life. You then tell him what's going on. You begin to tell him your feelings. And then you ask for what is good in that circumstance. And when you ask for what is good, ask in faith and ask in his name. So when, we, when, when people say in Jesus' name, that's in his name. That's what it means. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. That's in his name. I ask that you help me because I am anxious. Help me get out of this position where I feel that everything around me is not working any longer. I know that you are the only one that can take me out of this situation. And I ask this believing that it will be done. And I ask in your name. See how simple these principles are in praying? Sometimes we feel like I can't even put two words together. I can't even put a sentence together. You know, how am I going to speak to God? Just begin with my Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. That's how my son Christian starts every prayer. I can ask him to start, say grace. That's how he starts prayer. That's his way of praying. That's how he understands it. And that's the first time that God, Jesus teaches them how to pray. And he speaks about kingdom. There's no coincidence in the Bible. Let me just tell you that. There is no coincidence. Everything that you're looking for is here. You just need to look. Everything is available to you. You just need to ask. Number four. Ask for his will. Now, 1 John 5, verse 14. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen? So let's go over the four points. Number one was, ask for what is? Ask in. Ask in is. And ask for is? Okay, 12 of you. So we had the three young men come up. Right? And they obviously have something in their heart that they want to ask for God. They want to seek something. And they want to knock on that door. But that can only happen once you're in the kingdom of God. 
if you're on the outside, you'll be, you'll be asking and searching and knocking and nothing will be happening. You will not get the results that you're looking for. You'll be lost. You'll be lost asking the wrong people, going to the wrong places, door to door to door, knocking in search of what? What are we in search of? Matthew 6.33 says it perfectly. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all will be added. What is the all? What is the all that will be added? What is the all? What is the all? Dante, the all is you being appointed by a team overseas. That's what the all is. All is being successful, Jordan. And all is making your parents proud or giving, giving them the, the most joy, Landon. That's what it is. That's the all that God will bring you into. Everything, whether it's materialistic, whether it's spiritual, whatever it may be, it can be found there. But it, it asks that you align your life. You have to align your life. It cannot be that we, we're all over and not, not focus on him. He asks that you seek him first. And once you're in the kingdom, then we ask in this way. So to give you guidance, once again, when we find ourselves in the kingdom of God, we will, we will be able to ask in this manner and see the results of asking, seeking, and knocking continuously, not just once. This becomes a lifestyle. When you're in the kingdom, you, have, you can ask and ask again and ask more, and God will give you everything. So in the same principle of asking, seeking, knocking, asking, searching, knowing, God will give you what you require. He'll give you the blueprints. He'll give you understanding. You won't be left alone. He will give you the Holy Spirit. When you ask for good, it, think about it. God says, ask for wisdom. He'll give you wisdom. Wisdom. He's left the Holy Spirit for, for us. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us through this journey of life. This is not easy. It, I, I think later on in, in on the Sermon on the Mount, it speaks about the narrow gate and the, uh, and the wide. Okay? Narrow is, the gate. narrow is the way that leads to eternity, to lead, that leads to the kingdom. But the world makes it so easy to just be caught up in their kingdom and what's going on. They take us away, like I mentioned earlier, Look at what, what social media, a good tool, has done to us as humans. It's caused us not even to communicate with one another. Think about it. When you have to ask somebody a question, instead of physically waking up, which is good for your health, mind you, wake up, walk in your office, go to somebody's desk and ask them, no, let me just send the email, yeah? And he said, oh, he's not, a, he's not checking his email. Oh, he's logged off here. He's not on Teams. Okay, he's not on Teams. Let me see. WhatsApp. Okay, WhatsApp. Okay. Even that's not working. Okay, let me pick up the phone. You know, that's the last resort now. Let's phone the person. Even then, physical, f f physical, being physical, f uh, being physical with one another and, and, and being able to, to speak to one another is so important, but yet we find every other way of communicating. We become lazy and we do not see it. The world has caused you, instead of going to the teller and asking, okay, can I have a 200 and Hollywood voucher? No one said amen. We now can buy that Hollywood voucher online. Right? Some of y'all are looking so innocent here. But what do we do? We sit at home because now we can order our groceries on 60s, right? I'm not, I'm not saying anything about you, babe. I'm not, it's not, it's not. Uh, if you need uh, an outfit for a function, order online. It has become so convenient and so easy just to sit at home and be able to do everything you, you sh would, have been, uh, would have done that would have allowed you to meet people and be in, in, in interact with people. That's what I'm looking for. For you to be able to interact with people. The world has taken that away. Because the power of relationship is what it's trying to break. 
Because it says one can put a thousand, but two can put ten thousand. Right now, all of us believe because of uh, the power that we hold in our hand. On my cell phone, I've got every single app. I've got every single means of getting whatever I want. I hold the power. You're doing it all alone. But me having a relationship, even with the person that is next to me, right now, people at work, is so important in order for you to do what God wants you to do. We have bought our journey by just staying quiet because we're not asking any more questions. Right? So let's get back. We've, we've got the four simple rules of asking when we are in the kingdom. Ask for what is good. Ask in faith. And ask in his name and ask for his will. Now, many a times we pray out of a selfish attitude. We pray for our will to be done upon our lives. What is that that is act uh, what, what what is that that is present in our lives when we ask for our will? The flesh. The flesh is the only thing that will ask God for your will to be done and not his will to be done. Every time we approach God, now we all have our journey. And we all have fallen short. But there is forgiveness. It starts with repent. Repent. Each time you go to God in prayer, ask God, forgive you. If you are unaware, sometimes we are so caught up that we are even unaware of the things we may do. In a subtle way, we might be failing God. Might be doing something. But do this. Repent. Come to God. Repent. Give Him thanks. And after giving thanks, go to Him. Ask for a relationship. Ask that His will be done. Ask that it will be done in His name. Ask believing and for what is good. Have you been blessed so far? Now the heart of the seeker must change. God's desires must become our own. Then our prayers and our requests will automatically be aligned with His will. So as much as these three young men came up, and I believe all of, them will, all of that will be done to their lives, the seeker's heart must change. God's desires must become our own. And how does God's desires become our own? If I have to speak to say Tyrell, and I ask Tyrell, Tyrell, what are the desires of your heart? He will share with me. But what, what did I have to do? I had to go to him and I had to ask him. And then he told me. Same with God. The only way to understand what is in God's heart, what he, does, what he desires, is to go to God and ask him, Lord, what is your desire in my life? And let that desire in your life become your prayer. And God will unlock everything unto you. See, for the longest time, we have, always, we have always thought of it as, whatever is in my heart, you know what, that's God's will. How many people find themselves 20 years later finding the thing that they want to do the most and wish they had made the change 20 years before? Some of us have journeyed looking for answers. Couldn't find them. Why? The desires of our heart took over. Not God's desires, but our own desires. And listen, we're all human. We're all human. And I'm, I, I, I'm also guilty of it. I would be lying to say I, 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 if I wasn't. Because everyone dreams of a certain thing, a certain life, a, a certain material things, or a way of living, a lifestyle, whatever it may be. But sometime, God, sometime or the other, the question needs to be asked. God, is this what you desire for me? Furthermore, is this what you desire for my family? Is this what you desire for my children, for my spouse, 
for my mom, for my dad. Why? You are standing in the gap for them. As a parent, you need to ask God, what is the desire for you over my family and over the lives of my children so that you can be the head of your home? If you don't take your rightful place, the devil will have his way. You'll be caught up in the kingdom of the world. Now remember, God's kingdom, safe. The kingdom of the world ultimately results in destruction. So some of you here, and I'm, I'm at the end now. Just to bring um, some humor into it again. I know some of you enjoy the slot machines. So if you laugh, you're guilty. There's no slot machines in the God's kingdom, but I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If you think the riches of heaven are not found in what I've shared with you today, consider this. What is our main verse of scripture? Matthew 7, verse 7. How many letters in the name Matthew? Okay. You just hit the biggest jackpot today. Ever. I don't know whether my brain is wired differently to others, but I just find these things that it's amazing. But God is a God of humor. And I believe that's why it says this is the golden rule of asking, seeking, knocking. But we get it wrong. We always get it wrong because we never seek his kingdom first. We put all of our desires first. We ask for what we need. We ask because of how we feel. We ask because uh, it's, it, it's just the, uh, how we've become. We become compulsive ask, uh, askers, that if, you, if you could say that. We ask, 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 and then we carry on with no results, feeling like, is there a God or isn't there a God? But Matthew 6, 6.33 says it perfectly. Seek first the kingdom, and all will be added. Now, today, I'm going to bless you with a song. I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to sing. For those of you that thought I was going to sing, I'm not going to sing. I'm not singing. We have to understand that for some of us, God just didn't, the shower is the only place, you know. Like, just you, are, you and God. You and God. For those of you that like me, you can raise your hand. Okay. Thank you for being honest. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Now, pa Pastor, you're not, you're not that bad. You, you, you came a long way. Eh? From Alpha and Omega, you've, you've come a long way. So, but before I, we, we, the, the, the team will play this, the song for you, and I, I want you to stand. And I know it's been quick, but it's to the point, it's direct, it's easy to understand. It's an easy principle to understand, and it's an easy way to ask God. We've just been doing it the wrong way. And it's nothing wrong, it's nothing wrong. We all learn, we all live, we all learn. There's a time that God brought, me, brought this word to me, and now I can live by it. So, it's the same for you. But whilst the song plays, and the amazing thing is that I came across this song just recently. But this word was almost a year back, very close to the time that this song came out. And I just thought, you know what, how amazing. I never heard the song before. But at the same time, this word was alive in me. It's just a power. It just shows you the power of Words going out into the atmosphere, into the spirit. That song could have been, it's sung by elevation. they miles away. But that word captured my heart without even hearing it. Amazing, isn't it? So today, when I play this song for you, I want you to stand. I want you to speak to God. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him that you may be found in his kingdom. If you've been knocking on the wrong door, if you've been seeking in the wrong places, and if you've been asking all the wrong things, today is the first day that we get to do it right. So we, what we're going to do, we're going to ask for what is good. We're going to ask in faith. We're going to ask in his name. And we're going to ask for his will to be done in our lives. But before we do, we ask that we seek his kingdom with the directions that he has for our lives 
and knock on the door that will open so that all things can be added. Amen.